Here's our video report from the Apple event in London, where Apple just announced a new iPad Pro with the M4 chip, as well as Final Cut Pro 2 for the iPad and Final Cut Camera, an entirely new app for iPhone and iPad, which enables a new feature called Live Multicam. For the first time ever, Cinity was invited to an Apple event, and this time it took place at Battersea Power Station in London, which Apple made their new designated UK headquarters. The refurbished building was only recently reopened, and the event marked the first time that Apple invited non-employees into the building. As you would expect, the event was very well organized, and there were press and influencers from all over the world in the audience. So the keynote is over, we saw the same video that you guys were seeing at home, but some of the people are here that were in the films, and now we have a hands-on with all the new products. And I'm very excited to try out the new Final Cut Pro 2 for iPad, and also, of course, the new iPad Pro itself. Now, Final Cut Pro 2, I think, is very, very interesting because that, if it works really well, can really replace a laptop for a lot of editing, even for professional filmmakers on the go, especially with the new iPads that are even thinner now. The new tandem OLED screen in the new iPad Pros is really, really impressive. Because of course it has all the advantages of an OLED screen, which means very dark blacks, and we've really waited for a long time to get that in an iPad. But the other advantage is it's really, really bright. And usually the bigger an OLED screen gets, the less bright it is. And the tandem OLED technology clearly shows shows that it's working. So this is Final Cut Pro 2. Um, it's our biggest update since we launched last May. And with iPad Pro and M4, it gets even better. So here I have a project where we followed a really talented artist by the name of Emmett Sky. And as you can see here, he gave an intimate live performance to a bunch of his friends at a Brooklyn Loft. And so we have ProRes log footage here. We use a Sony A1. And all this footage just looks amazing on the new Ultra Retina XDR display. The first feature I'm really excited to announce is support for external projects. This project is actually being edited entirely off of this SSD. And with a fast Thunderbolt connection, you're able to play back and edit without skipping a beat. So let me go ahead and do that. My name is Emmett Sky, and I'm a single songwriter. I actually started when I was three years old. I found you know, music being like a savior. So again, that's being edited all off this SSD, and we're really excited to give creators even more storage flexibility. Another great aspect about editing an iPad, of course, it's its support for Apple Pencil. And for features like live drawing, it gets even better with Apple Pencil Pro. So let me show you that. Here I have a live drawing that I added. So it allows you to personalize um, your videos, adding titles like this super quickly. So let's go ahead and make some changes. I've entered my live drawing, and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to squeeze, and that brings up my tools for me. So let me go ahead and just delete this. And if I squeeze again, I can choose a different pencil option. Let's say I want to do a yellow highlighter to go with the graffiti look. And what's really cool with pencil hover and barrel roll, I'm actually able to change the orientation. And then I can just draw right on top of my footage. And if I tap done, my name is Image Sky. You'll see that that show. added that immediately. So super fun and intuitive with the Apple Pencil Pro. It's pretty amazing. So this is Live Multicam. It's a really awesome new feature that allows creators to film multicam setups with their iPhones. So here I have three iPhones all streaming to my iPad Pro, in addition to the fourth angle being the incredibly capable camera on my iPad Pro. And to enable this new workflow, we had to create a new Pro app called Final Cut Camera. So Final Cut Camera is running on all my iPhones, and it allows me to preview all of those angles right on my iPad Pro. Not only can I preview them, I can actually go ahead and make adjustments to each of them directly here. So let me show you what I mean by that. So let me go ahead and expand angle two, and this is looking pretty bright. Uh, so let me go ahead and hop into my manual exposure settings, and I'll just go ahead and dial down that exposure. I can also uh, tap to focus here, and I can also pinch to zoom, just like that. Let me hop into my third angle, and this is a little wide, so I can just punch in here into my telephoto lens and get some nice detail shots of my Magic Keyboard. And last but not least, let's go to angle four, and this is looking a little soft, so I can just use manual focus. And with the focus peaking indicators, I can now see everything is nice and sharp. And what's really cool is I can actually just go ahead and tap record. And it'll start filming. And Erica, tell me what you think about the new iPad Pro. 
super excited about this new iPad Pro. But my favorite feature is the new Apple Pencil Pro. Cut. And what's really great is after I'm done recording, I can simply tap done here and Live Multicam takes care of all my media management for me because it's streaming over these preview files and sync them right away. And I can even bring it into my timeline and I can start editing right away and switching angles. It's really seamless to move from production to editing. In the background, intelligently streaming over the full res ProRes files that we're capturing and it's gonna intelligently replace those preview files. So really makes it easy to, again, move from production to editing. Now I'm still here at Battersea Power Station, beautifully renovated old building that Apple made their new headquarters in the UK. And it's impressive, I have to say. First time ever, I think, that they actually made a major event here in Europe. Now, of course, we only saw a pre-recorded keynote like we've seen from any Apple event since COVID. Beautifully produced, again, shot on iPhone, which again was uh, written at the end of the actual keynote uh, and edited on the iPad. But the exciting stuff here are the hands-on that we get uh, with the product afterwards. And I mean, the iPad Pro is, has just been upgraded to the M4 chip, which is amazing because it's actually the first Apple product that has this new generation of chips. Even the MacBook Pros only run on M3. Um, I guess they had to make the leap to M4 in order to not make the iPad Pro outdated again at the end of the year when probably all the Macs will be upgraded to M4 because they left out one year. So it's the first time we have a new iPad Pro in two years. So the new Final Cut really impressed me. Final Cut Pro 2 is an upgrade and it's actually, they say, completely redesigned and completely redone from scratch. I think the first version might have been based on the original Final Cut because it didn't have all of the touch functionality that we were hoping would have. It felt like something that was ported from the Mac in some parts, but the new one, as far as I could tell in the little hands-on that I had, is much more intuitive. It's, it's working really well with any touch gesture. It works also really well with a pencil, with a new Apple Pencil, of course, and I think also with the old ones. And it supports even the gestures of uh, the new a Apple Pencil Pro. Um, now, what's impressive is are some functions that definitely use some functionality that's inside the M4 chip, uh, which is related to machine learning. And uh, one of them is, for example, a keyer. So you can actually select objects and um, it will automatically crop them out, even if there is a busy background. Now, it's not perfect. It's not green screen. And it's still, you can tell it's still in development because I, I found some small little issues with it. But it works really well if you, for example, want to isolate a person in front of a wall and put some text behind them. That will work really well because, of course, it's more forgiving in terms of, you know, the actual seams, the actual spill that you get if you're not using a proper green screen. Um, but it works really, really impressively well. And I think for everyday kind of work, I can see this being used all the time. Also on the phone, like if they put this functionality on in a phone version of that app, very impressive indeed, because you could, you know, you could be much more creative uh, with online videos as well, but just normal fast moving content, it's much easier to generate like that. On top of that, they announced Final Cut Camera, completely unexpected new iPhone app, which kind of competes with the Blackmagic Cam app because it gives you full manual control. As far as I could see, most of the controls are there. Uh, you can change ISO, you can change white balance, you have manual focus, you even have focus peaking. And also it has a function which is similar to Blackmagic Cloud, which is an auto sync function. So it's a multi-cam function. So you can use, I think, up to four iPhones and just film from different angles and then sync it to uh, um, the iPad version of Final Cut Pro and it will automatically show up. Like it will automatically stream actually proxies and you will already be able to edit with the proxies and in the background or the Wi-Fi, it will transfer the ProRes versions of those files to the iPad um, and then you have a proper multicam edit, super easy. That's really impressive. And again, something that's, you know, going to make a difference for live events, I think. Just imagine a crowd full of people using iPhones, um, all using that app and having somebody um, doing a live edit on that. That's pretty amazing. And, and I think we've not even seen the potentials of that yet because Blackmagic, you know, has the same kind of functionality with Blackmagic Cloud. 
uh, and now it's built into the iPhone kind of with the Final Cut app. Um, the app is not out yet, the Final Cut Cam app is not out yet, um, but it's, it looks like an impressive uh, piece of software. Other than that, the new iPad Pro is really, really light. Now, of course, Apple is always about making things thinner and lighter, and at some point you think, well, you know, do we need it even lighter? Um, I have to say, I've not really, well, I've, I've had an iPad Pro for a while, but I've sent it back because it was too heavy. Uh, basically, when you hold it in one hand and try to do something with the other hand, it, the big iPad, the 13 inch, it, it kind of, you know, I got heavier after a while. The new one, I can already tell not the case anymore. Those 100 grams lighter actually make a big difference. You can hold it, I have rather big hands, but you can hold it in one hand and still do editing with the other and it works really, really well. So that's pretty impressive. And let's see, I mean, I, I think finally the iPad Pro might actually be something that a lot of pros will use for even uh, video editing. Well, thanks guys. And I'm gonna send you off with some nice views here from London with a beautiful sunny day. It was a really cool event. And of course, as expected from Apple, perfect organization, uh, very nice, very impressive. Mm -hmm.